President. Senator from North Carolina. Thank you, Mr. President. I first want to thank my colleague, Senator Sinema, for her comments. I think that she's framed a lot of the challenges that we were seeking to address that are going to persist into the next Congress now. I think one of the things that we have to do, if, if we're able to achieve bipartisan consensus in the next Congress, is to get more people to recognize, just as Senator Sinema stated in her first few lines of, uh, of her comments just before me, we have a crisis at the southern border. And it's a crisis where the border states, the southern border states, bear the brunt of it, but it affects everybody in the United States. Every city, every state, every community is being affected by the crisis at the border. I think this administration has to recognize it's, it's interesting if you watch the news coverage how suddenly one end of the spectrum says now is time for Congress to act. The crisis at the border, two million illegal crossings in each of the last uh, 12 month periods for a total of four million people illegally crossing the border. We dodged a bullet this week when Title 42, which is a policy that allows expedited removal for a certain group of those crossing the border illegally to be returned. But tomorrow or next week or in the next couple of weeks, that policy is going to come off the books. Then Border Patrol says that they will no longer have control over the border. They already have said that they can barely keep up. The vast majority of people who are Border Patrol agents who should be responding to illegal crossings are now working in the aftermath of two million people coming across the border over the last 12 months. They're, they're providing housing, transportation. They're not actually doing law enforcement. If Title 42 goes away, that two million is estimated to be three million over the next 12 months. And it could go up from there. Ever since President Biden's taken office, we have to keep in mind that, that this is just an objective observation. In the 12 months before President Biden came into office, there were about a half a million illegal crossings. In, in the 12 months before, in the 12 months after, there were two million. And the 12 months after that, there were two million. And now we have the threat of three million and continuing. What's even worse than that, though, I mean, you have to, on the one hand, when you see somebody risking their life to come into this country, you have to kind of take it as a compliment. They, they want to realize the American dream. And I admire that. But we have to, one of the very reasons why we are so attractive as a country to come and live and prosper is because we're a nation of laws. We have order. Now we have disorder at the border. And even though it's a huge problem to have two million crossings every year. It's an even worse problem to have 50,000 gotaways. I want to tell you, the, the way it works down at the border, I've been to the border several times. The vast majority of the people that cross the border, immediately you literally see at the northern uh, side of the Rio Grande uh, an, an a, a arrow that points you to where you can go to be processed. They know that they're going to be treated respectfully. They'll be given housing. They'll be given food. They'll go through the process. What's concerning is that there's some 50,000 per month who intentionally evade apprehension. Now, why on earth, if you've got a valid asylum claim or you don't have a criminal record, would you run the risk of evading Border Patrol rather than presenting yourself, getting in line, being processed, and being released within a few weeks? The reason for that is that many of them have criminal background records. We had 750 uh, recently apprehended who were uh, documented members of gangs in their, in their country of origin. These are people that are coming to this country and quickly going to the communities that they're most like and making those communities less safe for the people who, are, who are, are legally present or for the people who have been relocated over the past couple of years with the flood at the border. And you also have to understand that the cartel, the reason the administration has to recognize this is a crisis is the cartels made an estimated $800 million over the last 12 months paying a toll to come to this country. If you're, in a, if you're in a Latin American country or South American country, you're paying on average between five dollars to $7,000 per person 
If you're from China, you're paying about $35,000. These cartels have set up a marketing function. They go to these source countries and say, if you pay us a fee, we will get you to the United States. In spite of the fact that they may have passed through other safe countries that they could seek asylum. That's what we talk about when we're talking about abusing our asylum system. Our international treaties say that if somebody comes to you and you have a credible fear for your life or your family's life in the country that you live, relate, relocate to a country that can grant you asylum and go through the process. But what the cartels are saying, pay us a fee, we don't care where you are in the world, literally, and we will get you to the United States. And you will pass through several countries where you could have applied for asylum in between. And then when you get here, the cartels have coached them on exactly what to say to make you think that they have a credible asylum claim, in spite of the fact that with hundreds of judges, Democrat judges, Republican judges, independent judges, 80% of those asylum claims are deemed not to be credible. So the asylum system is broken. It has to be fixed. It's one of the foundations of any kind of framework that I could support. The border has to be secured, and we need more technology and more enforcement at the legal ports of entry because those same cartels that are making $800 million a year are spending that money to then send truckloads of fentanyl and dangerous drugs poisoning and killing Americans. So I hope that in the next Congress we can recognize, number one, hopefully the administration will recognize that we do have a crisis at the border. And it can't be solved on partisan grounds. We have to have a conversation. Both ends of the political spectrum need to recognize that you've got to move to a point to where we can produce a solution. Otherwise, Americans are going to be poisoned to death. People trying to cross the border are going to die in the hundreds. And it's a moral, it's a moral obligation that we have to get out of our political comfort zone and get something done. Otherwise, the deaths, the blood of the people who die as a result of inaction are on the hands of everybody in this room. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President.